Hello and welcome to another video by www.electricalpereview.com. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the many different definitions that end in ANCE, or impedance, reactance, inductance, capacitance, admittance, conductance, susceptance, and all of the above. So uh, many different types of impedances. It's easy to get lost in the definitions if you don't know exactly what they are. Um, this blog post and this video was inspired by finishing the chapter on transmission lines because you see the use of admittance and a lot of shunt impedances. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Um, the first, we will start with impedance. So impedance is a complex number represented by capital Z, and it equals to R plus Jx. Impedance is in the unit of ohms and is usually represented by either something like this, a big block on a circuit, or it will be the combination of a resistor and either an inductor or a resistor and a capacitor, like that. So all of these could be term Z. Impedance, all it is, it's the sum of a resistive component, R, which is the real component of the impedance, and the imaginary component of impedance, which is reactance. X. So from there, we're going to pick on resistance, R. Resistance is also in the unit of ohms. And in a circuit, of course, it's going to look like one big resistor. Now, anytime you have just an R, there's going to be no reactive component, X. So we could say that resistance, R, is equal to the real component of complex number, Z. Okay, next we have X, we have reactants. X is also in the unit of ohms. And it's going to look like either a inductor or it will be a capacitor. Now, we have two different types of reactants, right? We're going to have either capacitive reactants which is going to be negative J of X, or we're going to have inductive reactance or positive J of X. For capacitive reactance, we typically see the notation X subscript C, and for inductive capacitance, we usually see the notation for X subscript L. Capacitive reactance is always going to be, of course, shown as a capacitor, and inductive reactance is always going to be shown as a inductor. Now the inter interesting thing to note is a capacitive reactance like such will always supply a positive, or I'm sorry, it's always going to generate VARs, so it's going to have a minus VARs attribute. And an inductive capacitance is always going to consume VARs, so it's going to have a plus VARs attribute. So if we look at two different power, power triangles, and this is also where lagging and leading comes from, if this is our complex power S, since we have a plus Jx value, this would be a inductive load or lagging. So this load would be plus J of X. And uh, if we look at the opposite, if we look at a complex power like this with a minus J of X, we know that this is leading or it's a minus J of X. Say capacitive uh, impedance. That's why we use capacitors to improve power factor, right? Because the greater this value here, the worse the power factor is since S and P are much different. And as we lower that value and approach S equals to P on this leg of the triangle, we approach a power factor of unity. Okay, now we're at a point where we can discuss the most commonly confused terms. So over here on the left, we have an inductive reactance. And over here on the right, we have a capacitive reactance. So what's the difference between an inductive reactance and inductance and a capacitive reactance and capacitance? Well, inductive reactance obviously comes from inductance, but the two are very different. Over here, we're still working in ohms. Anytime we're dealing with any type of reactance, it's always going to be in the unit of ohms. But X of L, our inductive reactance, is actually comes from uh, inductance. So 
x of l really is, of course, w times our inductance in Henry's, or 2 pi f, our frequency, times l, where l is in the unit of h for Henry's. So l is actually going to be our inductance, and we use our inductance in Henry's to calculate our inductive reactance in ohms. Next, just like for a capacitive reactance, x of c in ohms, x of c, our capacitive reactance, is found from capacitance, where this time it's going to be 1 over w times c, or 1 over 2 pi f for frequency times our total capacitance in farads. So while x of c, our capacitive reactance, is still in ohms, c is going to be our total farads. So C is in farads, C is our capacitance, we use our capacitance to calculate our capacitive reactance. So don't let those two terms conf uh, confuse you, that's where the most people make the most common mistakes. Okay, a quick note about both of the different types of reactances. On the left we have inductive reactance, and on the right we have capacitive reactance. That comes from both inductance and capacitance. The difference is as follows. So inductive reactance, due to this coil, the buildup of the magnetic field, inductive reactance opposes the change in current. This is why um, inductors are often used as uh, big reactors. They can limit uh, big surges in the line, um, things of that nature. So inductive reactance, a positive reactance value, J of X, is always going to resist any large changes in current. It's gonna slow down that rate of change. And it's kind of similar, a capacitive reactance, that comes from the capacitance and farads of the device, it's going to resist the change of voltage. And the reason for that is these two plates right here, they never actually touch each other. There's a dielectric medium in between the two. Sometimes it's air, sometimes it's another type of compound. But basically, you end up with a really big charge buildup on both sides of these plates. What that does is when you lose power, it's going to resist the change in voltage. It'll actually supply a little bit of voltage, but it's also going to supply, like we said, uh, reactive power. So it's, it's actually going to be a minus VAR's value because it's the source. Just like this over here, it's going to have a plus VAR's value because it's actually going to consume reactive power. So one consumes reactive power, inductive reactants because it creates a magnetic field, kind of like the uh, stator winding coils in a motor or generator, and it resists that big change in current anytime a, a change in current happens. And capacitive reactants will supply VARs because of the buildup of charge on both sides of the plate. And it will change, and it will resist any big changes in voltage fluctuation. Okay, now we are moving on to admittance. So what exactly is admittance? Well, admittance is represented by the capital letter Y. And really, all admittance is, is it's the inverse of impedance. However, now we have two new variables introduced, G and B. So let's start with G. If impedance is resistance plus reactance, we know that resistance opposes the flow of current, so does impedance then the opposite of opposing the flow is going to be conductance. So conductance actually opposes, I'm sorry, conductance actually allows uh, the flow of current. So conductance could be said as how easily a circuit can conduct current. And admittance now is in the unit of capital S for Siemens compared to impedance, which we know is in ohms. And sometimes you'll even see Instead of Siemens, you'll see an upside down omega, and they call that a mo. Simply ohm spelled backwards. So these two are one and the same. So G is conductance, also in the unit of Siemens, which is the inverse of impedance, is how easily a circuit can conduct electricity. Next we have B, which is going to be susceptance. So if B is the opposite of X, and X is reactance, reactance is how much a circuit will oppose the change of current or voltage. 
then B, susceptance has to be how easily the flow of current or the change in voltage can be. So B, still in the unit of Siemens, B is susceptance, or how susceptible a circuit is for the voltage and current to change. Okay, so you might ask, what's the deal with admittance? Why do we have to use it? If it's just the inverse of impedance, then why not just use everything impedance? Well, typically, anytime you have anything shunted to neutral or ground or another line, which is the same thing as being in parallel, usually it's going to be represented in admittance, especially in transmission lines and a few other cases. And anytime anything's in series, it's typically going to be expressed in impedance. The reason for this is Ohm's law, we know, is V equals to IR which we can rewrite for a complex impedance, which is V equals IZ. And since Y is one over Z, anytime we're solving for voltage and we're using admittance, we actually divide. And then anytime we're using Ohm's law to solve for current, where we would have I equals to V over Z, we multiply. So it would be I equals to V times Y. Sometimes I can make it a little bit easier, but also it's just better to know the parameters in their relationship to both susceptance and conductance when we're dealing with shunt parameters. So typically that's when you're going to see your admittance values. All right, that's it for our explanation on the difference between all the ants terms or the impedances, reactance, inductance, capacitance, admittance, acceptance, all that good stuff. Um, for more free articles uh, to try our PE exam practice problems or enroll in our online review course for the Electrical Power PE exam, come check us out at www.electricalpereview.com. We'll see you soon.